There's no, what do you call it? There's no fever, so it's not coronavirus. Mm. It's just a head cold, allergies. Yeah, that's what I have. But my phlegm and my, and my throat and all that mm. still get coughed up. Hopefully it'll help them. So, it's God working with us a victory. He hasn't closed the door. He closed other doors in the ministry. All right, so let's pray. Lord God, the Father, I just thank you for it. Lord God, I thank you for the farmer's market ministry. Lord God, let me not be an ass to ruin. Let me not get prideful and in proudness. But Lord, let me be respectable to your gospel. So yet, Lord God, I preach hellfire and damnation, but Lord God, to be respectful to the people that maybe somebody wants to call upon you. Lord, let me not sin in arrogance. Lord, open up your study today to the Word of God, Lord God, as we're about to look at a very sensitive topic, a topic that involved Adam and Eve, involved King David, and even Jesus Christ in us. Lord, whether how slow we take it or how quick we take it, Lord God, it is something that needs to be studied. I ask for your permission, Lord, as we open your Word. I ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be exalted. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Alright, John chapter 1. And like I said, we're, gonna, we're in a subject now. I don't know how long it's going to take us. And I am no rush. But we're going to step out of the Gospel of John for a moment. But we're actually still in the Gospel of John. We're going to look at events right now that's going to happen in Jesus' life that John doesn't record. But it's important to look at. So, in John chapter 1, and we'll pick up the last paragraph that we were at, and we'll close with the paragraph, and Lord willing, we'll come back to the paragraph, because your Bible has paragraph marking. We'll pick up verse 29, down to 34. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. This is he whom I said, After me cometh the man which, which is preferred before me, which, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from, from heaven like a dove, and it bowed upon him. I knew him not. I'm not, we've already gone over this. I'm just reading what we're reading. I knew, I knew him not, but... He that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see me, shalt see the Spirit descending, and remain upon him, the same shall, the same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. It's hard to talk and preach with the drop in your mouth. And I saw and bear record, this is the Son of God. And then the paragraph, at the end of the next day, we're going to stop there. We're not going to get, when we come back, we'll pick up with again the next day. But, between John 1, 34 and 35, there's an event that's not recorded. And let's pick up in Matthew chapter 4. Now, all four Gospels do not have all four stories. The birth of Jesus Christ is only in one of the Gospels, and Luke. The Magi coming to Jesus when he was about two years old is only in the book of Matthew. Now, the death, burial, and resurrection, and, and after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they're in all four uh, Gospels. Luke has more in his Gospels of extra written things that Matthew, Mark, and John don't have. Now, we're getting into an event right now that is not recorded in John, but we need to take this break between John 137 to look at what happens in Jesus after his baptism. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. And this is where we picked off at the end of what we left off in the Gospel of John. So you know where we're at. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water. There it is. That's, that's where we're in John. And lo, the heavens opened, and unto him he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. This is what we just read. And lighting upon him. Now, John didn't record this to... To low a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, John didn't record that. 
God spoke from heaven. When, when Jesus came out of the baptism, Jesus is dripping wet, being immersed, and God speaks now, chapter 4. And it's worth one. We'll read through it first. I don't know how long we're going to be in, but this is important. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit, the Spirit of God, and wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The Holy Spirit led Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Why would you think that you won't be tempted of the devil? Jesus, who is God, the devil tempted him. That's what we're going to read about now. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungry. I would be hungry too. That's God. You can't fast 40 days. That's over a month. And I, I, I forget what it is about water, but I think it's only a couple weeks you can live without water. And when the tempter, that's the devil, came to him, say, If thou be the Son of God, and he is, command these stones to be made bread. But when he answered, he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We're going to look at all this. The devil taketh him up to a holy city and setteth him upon the pinnacle of the temple. That's the temple that Jesus is going to be preaching in. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, he is, cast, down, cast thyself down for his written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, in their hands they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. We'll look at that verse later. But Jesus said unto him, It is written, again, notice what Jesus' attack is against the devil. It is written. It is written. I had a preacher one time, well, I'm going to get old smutty face, or I'm going to get the water guns of hell and blast them with water. Oh, no, you're not, and your church has been destroyed and split, and your life is destroyed. If you're going to attack the devil, Jesus, who is God, attacked the devil with Scripture. You better be careful with Scripture you know, because the devil knows Scripture. Because we're looking at things here that, when we look at this, the devil's going to quote the Old Testament Scriptures right at Jesus. The devil knows Scripture more than the Christian knows Scripture. And again, verse 8, the devil takes him up to an exceedingly high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And says unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Here's your politics. The devil says, I'll give you all the kingdoms. I'll give you the queen. I'll give you the king. I'll give you the prime minister. I'll give you the presidency. I'll give you whatever that... That reign of that kingdom has, wherever the name of that, that ruler is, I'll give it to you if you fall down and worship me. There it is. That's why a Christian has no business in politics, because that's the realm of the devil, and that's what the devil used against Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But that's all. We'll get into that, hopefully. And then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Scripture, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only thou shalt serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came to minister him. Now when Jesus heard that John was cast into prison, and this is later on. So we're looking at verses, chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. And what's commonly called the temptation of Jesus. Luke chapter 3. In Luke chapter 3, and the Holy Ghost descended the body shape like the dove upon him. Oh, well, that's John. And we come to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, 
returned to Jordan and led by the Spirit to the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. So while Jesus is fasting forty days and forty nights, along with his fast, the devil was on his butt. And those days did eat nothing, and when they were ended, afterwards he hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones that be made bread. Now listen, what we're reading has been recorded in Matthew, is being recorded in Luke. You have more of the temptation of Jesus than you have the birthday of Jesus. And when God repeats himself, it's very important. When you read through the Old Testament, you know how often you read about that tabernacle? You know how many times we read about the, the Ark of the Covenant being built and the size of the Ark? Like, come on, Lord. This is born. No, it's not born. It means something. And we may not have the full meaning. There is more about the temptation of Jesus than there is the birthday of Jesus. Because why? Because us Christians are going to be tempted. If Jesus was tempted. And there are Christians out there saying, well, I'm not going to suffer and I'm a Christian. Well, Jesus suffered. Who do you think you are? And I almost cussed at that moment. I almost said the H E W L. You think you're better than Jesus? Have we not been tempted in our lives in our Christian walk for something by the devil? Yeah, say yes because we have been. So was Jesus. So, and we're looking at. I, I, I gotta go slow because this is important. Mm -hmm. And when the devil comes up to you with whatever sins is yours, I don't need to know. You don't need to know mine. You can look at Jesus and say, Jesus, I need help. Remember, the devil did the same thing to you. And I am not as holy as you are. And Jesus, if you don't help me, I'm going to fail. But you must be studying the Word of God and reading the Word of God to conquer the devil. Because the first thing Jesus does is He quotes the Scripture. And don't be throwing Scripture out of God. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. What's the context of that Scripture? Well, I can do all things. Alright, jump out of an airplane at 4,000 feet without, an air, without a parachute. Well, I, 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 you said you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Here comes the Bible preacher saying, okay, do it without a parachute. If you're going to do battle with the devil, you better know the Scriptures. And let me tell you, if you don't know the Scriptures, you're not going to do battle with the devil because the devil don't care about you. Because if you're not threatening hell, he's not going to threaten you. Listen, the devil is not in a bar room. He's in church. When you're going to spook the occupants of hell and tell them how to get out of hell and tell them how great and wonderful the Almighty God is and how merciful he is, you better believe the devil's going to be on your back. The devil's more in churches than he is in bars. Because there are churches where Christians are trying to do right and want to do right. Jesus is on his way already to the cross. Now, he just started his ministry at 33, at 30 years old. But he's on his way to the cross and the devil's already trying to stop him. If the devil can stop Jesus going to the cross, then he can stop our salvation and hell can be full. And if you're not doing anything to stop people from continuing to go to hell and, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil has no interest in you at all. You're helping him. Well, if you're going to rise up and you're going to preach, you're going to get gospel tracts, you're going to get, you're going to do something to get people out of hell. You're going to do something to encourage Christians to be more biblical in their life and live more right and pleasing to God. The devil's going to step up. Okay, temptation. Now you've got to get in your Bible. And Jesus answered, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word of God. The devil takes him up to a high mountain, shows him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Notice that little, a moment of time. Go ahead, sell yourself out for the ruler of that kingdom. It's only a moment of time. And then once you die or overthrown, the devil will find somebody else. I mean, you can only have two reigns of presidency in my state right now. So after eight years, 
All right, so in England, you can reign as long as you live. And I don't know if Queen Elizabeth is ever going to die, but eventually she's going to die. And what is your life but a vapor? And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. The power of the kingdom God gave to the devil. For it is delivered unto me, whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore worship me, all shall be thine. Death, and if Jesus never rebukes him. He says, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He brought him to Jerusalem, set him up on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from him. For it is written, He shall give the angels charge over thee, and keep thee. And in thy hands they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou shalt die dash thy foot against a stone. Now that's a remarkable scripture. Wait till I show you the rest of the scripture that the devil forgot to quote. Oh. The devil pulled one of those, you know, I could do so all things in Christ, and then left out a lot of context. And Jesus answered, said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil ended all the temptation, he departed from him, Jesus, for a season. He didn't depart from him the rest of his life. He said for a season. When the devil comes and tempts you, and if you're still living, he's only going to tempt you and leave you for a season. He'll be back. And the more you do right, the more those seasons are going to get closer and closer. So, we got the temptation. Uh, and Mark 16, 9 to 11 record, but we're not going to do Mark 16, because we just read. So there are three accounts of the temptation of Jesus by Satan. Come on, give me the birth date of Jesus. December 25th, you're wrong. That's Tammuz' birthday. If you don't know who Tammuz is, sorry for you. You guys study more. Alright, so, why do we do this? Are we done with the study? Oh, no, we're not. We're not done. You realize we just read the three tools of Satan's toolbox. And Satan has only three tools, and he pulled them out on Jesus. And he's going to pull them out on men. And these are the same tools that Satan has been used ever since Eve in the garden. And he's going to use one of these three tools, two of these three tools, or even all three of these three tools of his toolbox. He will use it on us Christians in 2020 or whenever you hear this video. And he has nothing more than these three tools and nothing less than these three tools. And you can get victory over these three tools because Jesus got victory over the tools. And you would think, oh, Satan's so clever, and I, I'm walking lightly because I don't want to mess with Satan. Not especially I just got victory from God about preaching the gospel. And I know Satan's right here, sitting here right now, I, You know, God's up in heaven saying, hey, look at the blessing I just gave him. Hey, he can preach on that sidewalk. And the devil's like, well, yeah, well, you know. I'm a, Satan got me on my butt right now. I need to be careful what I say. I need to be careful where I go. And I need to be careful what I do. And I'm not talking about places. I'm talking about pride or proud. That, that's where Satan would want me to be. Now we're going to, I'll show you those three tools. Uh, 1 John chapter 2. I will show you, and the Bible shows us, what those three tools are. And we're going to look at those three tools. And we're going to study those three tools. And if you're, after this study, during this study... 
And if you remember this study, and you're going through your life, and you're being tempted by the devil, and you're getting opposition by the devil, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, look back to what we have here and examine yourself to what tool the devil is using. And I guarantee one of these tools, two of these tools, <laughs> three of these tools, and nothing more. And I will show you these tools in 1 John chapter 2, verse 12, I will show you these tools in Eve, our mother. Adam called her Eve, for she's the mother of all living. I will show you these tools in a king named David. And I will show you these tubes and these tools in Jesus Christ, our Lord God and Savior. And when we're done with Eve, and we're done with David, and we're done with Jesus, we can look at our life without you confessing to me and me confessing to you. You should be able to look at your life and say, aha, that's the problem. And 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Let's look at what Satan does and how he does it. And the next few weeks we do this, you need to pray because Satan's sitting right there saying, I don't want you to tell. Satan is not nervous at Stiley Hayward. Satan is nervous because we're reading the scriptures and we are showing to who he is. Satan does not want to be revealed. And yet the Bible says about Satan, we're not ignorant of his devices. When we're, stuck, when we're done with this study, Lord Terry, Lord willing that I don't die or end up in a hospital, by the time we're done with this study, we're not going to be ignorant of one of Satan's devices, of his tools, that he pulls out of his toolbox and says, okay, time to work. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. We're starting verse 15. Love not the world, plain and simple. Amen. That's not in the churches today. They love the world. Neither the things that are in the world. I can go there, but I won't. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, capital F, is not in him. Whoa. That's a big mouthful of words right there. If you love the world, God doesn't love you. Get me off churches. For all that's in the world. And here we go. Here's his three tools. The lust of the flesh, number one. The lust of the eyes, number two. And the pride of life, number three. Is not of the Father, capital F but is of the world. Those are the three tools Satan uses. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And I will show you from the scriptures the devil using that verse, the devil using those tactics. And all right, look at yourself. Lust of the thing about lust of the flesh. Gee, what fleshy things do I like? world and all. What do I like? Where does the devil attack? How about, what do my eyes like to see? Lust. What do my eyes like to see? What's wrong with pornography? Well, here you go. And then the pride of life. Who do I think I am? And we'll take a look at that. But there it is. The lust of the flesh is eat, drink, and be merry. All for me, the gusto, me, myself, and I. How great thou I am. Mm. Lust of the eyes, ads, pornography, look see, pictures, advertisements, commercials. The pride of life, look at who I am. There it is. 
These three basic tools have been in effect of all mankind for 6,000 years. It hasn't changed. It, it's, you know, mankind is mankind. Oh, no, we got Black Lives Matter. We got these people. Well, you know, you're all the same. You're all sinning. For all sin comes short of the glory of God. Be Democrat. Be Republican. You're still a sinner. And you're still the three objects of these tools of the devil. I don't care what political party you is. I don't care if you're born in Europe. I don't care if you're born, uh, born in South America. I don't care if you're born in an island nation. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life is going to get you. So in 1 John 2.16, say hello to Eve. There she is. Did you know that? Say hi, Eve. And we'll look at Eve today. Let's go all the way back to Genesis 3. The first man and woman, Adam and Eve. I'm not a psychologist. I'm, I'm a doctor of theology, but I'm not a psychologist. But I am going to tell you today, Lord willing, next week, uh, how many weeks after that, I am going to tell you what the root cause of your sin. Now I just told you. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You got, you got a problem looking at pictures? Lust of the eyes. You got a problem thinking about those pictures? Lust of the flesh. I'm allowed to do it because I have control of the pride of life. I don't know anybody's sins here. So Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Let's start right off. Now the serpent. That serpent is the old serpent. Revelation 12 tells us it's the devil, the same, Satan, and the old dragon. That's Revelation chapter 12. There is the devil showing up with mankind, man and woman. The first marriage was, was Genesis 2, 23 to 25. Man and woman, they're perfect, no divorce, no problems, no death. They're standing before God, the holy and righteous God. They, they are pure, they are clean, they, they're having fellowship with God. Everything's wonderful, great in the garden. There's no hospitals, there's no crime, there's nothing wrong in the garden. Genesis 3, now the serpent was more subdued than the beast of the field. And Revelation chapter 12 tells us that's the devil. And he said unto the woman, Yea, Positive thinking. Hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. I already questioned what God said. Did God say it? Did God really say it? Is that what God means? That's what they do in seminaries. I didn't say seminaries, I said seminaries. When they try to teach the Word of God to young, young people, and all they're doing is perverting the Word of God to young people. Did God really say that? Well, the original Hebrew, maybe the original Greek, or well, my Bible says, that's the pride of who you are, what you are. That's the pride of life. Questioning the Word of God already. The first thing the attack the devil does with man is, is that really what God said? When you're reading your Bible, don't ever question what God says. Take a pencil, write a question mark. Say, God, I, I don't understand that. I don't want to go as far as... I'm going to say, Lord, God, that's... I'm putting a question mark, God. And if, if you will, one day you'll answer that question. And listen, the devil will challenge you. The devil will challenge me. Middle of the night, he wakes you up. Do you really believe God can do all things? Right. <laughs> Why don't you wake me up for that? And then you start going, can God do really... Yeah, you know, I had two wives die, and the God's all, wait, I can't, can't be thinking about it. And that's the devil's got you. Mm -hmm. There'd be times you're going through Genesis, you're saying, we need to get. Oh, come on, really, Noah built the ark, and God, what, what am I thinking? And you'll be going through your Bible, reading your Bible, saying, I'm reading my Bible for God, and the devil say, do you believe that? Yeah, oh, you know, that's kind of, yeah, it has God said You've been praying? You think God's really going to answer that prayer? 
How long have you been praying that prayer? He comes up. Listen, when he came up to Jesus, what was he doing? And I'll show you later. He was quoting scripture. Well, he said, you know, I'm having a problem right now, but it couldn't be the devil. He's quoting scripture at me. It is the devil. And he don't quote the NIV, and he don't quote the ASV. He quotes the King James. Imagine the devil using the King James Bible. I know. I've been saved since 1987. I've been in the Word of God. I, I, I preach on the streets. I witness to people. I tell people about Jesus. I try to go. I try to grow Christians to get right. I get Christians angry with me. I get preachers mad at me. I get churches mad at me. I get the world mad at me. And the devil comes. Is that really what that said? You really believe that? Another tool in Satan's toolbox? Yea, has God said. You better be strong in the scriptures when, when the devil comes up and starts questioning those scriptures in your life. You better be strong. Because if you're not strong, you don't know the scriptures, you don't memorize the scriptures, you don't study the scriptures, Satan's got you. You do know that one of your armor is the sword, and the sword is the word of God. You better know how to use that sword. So, entry, verse 2, and the woman said unto the serpent, and, the number, and she's talking to the serpent. We're in Disneyland. The animals are talking to the people, and the people are talking to the animals. And it does not stun her like I'm talking to this snake. Maybe they all talk. I used to watch a cartoon called The Flintstone, and all the animals can do all kinds... Uh, you know what? Uh, the more I read the Bible, the more I look. I, maybe that has some truth to it. Satan knows the Bible, and he quoted it to Jesus. You know, he misquoted it. Be careful, because he will misquote. And we'll show that later. But this is he. But the tree, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Where is it? How does she know where it is? She knows exactly where that tree is. It's in the midst of the garden. How do you know that? Yeah, you know what channel you're not supposed to be watching. You know what website you're not supposed to be visiting. You know where that tobacco products are in the store. You know where that stuff is in that grocery store. You know where exactly where it is. You know where to avoid. It amazes me in America, we can't drink and drive. But you need a driver's license to buy alcohol. What? <laughs> ye shall not, God said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She's correcting the word of God, and we're not going to get into that right now. That's not our study. But she corrected the word of God. Go back to Genesis 2, 16, 17 later and check that out. She adds, subtracts, and footnotes the Word of God. But that's not what we're look, looking at. And believe me, if we were to take that study, we'd go off on another rabbit hole for another couple weeks. Satan has questioned the Word of God, and Eve corrects the Word of God. Jesus did not correct the Word of God. Satan questioned it, but Jesus quoted it correctly. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. That's an outright lie. God said, Thou shalt surely die. But Eve didn't quote the scriptures completely. What's wrong with having a modern Bible where you don't quote the scriptures completely? Satan will come in and say, Yeah, okay, I like that. I really like that. I, I, I'm glad you got that modern perverted Bible because you can't do nothing because that's not God's word. Thank you. That's why I battle people on Bibles and religion. You're always picking on the Jehovah, Jehovah Witnesses because they're wrong and they need to know what's right and you need not get involved. You're always picking on modern Bible because you need the right Bible, you need to get the right, correct Bible, or you're going to mess up your life. You keep drinking alcohol, you're going to have a messed up life. Better me tell you about it now. God does know in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be... Uh-oh, we're getting closer. See the eyes? They'll be open. 
You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Your eyes. Mm -hmm. You see the eye? And then you shall be as gods. Oh, God. And I'll know things. I'll have a, 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 a letters of, of initial letters behind my name. I'll be a doctor. I'll be a, a DD. I'll be a BHS. I'll be all this other kind. Look, how, look at how great I'll be. And the woman, all right, here we go. Let's pay attention to verse 6. Ready? When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, what would you think that would be our study so far? There's the lust of the eye. E was, ah, oh, that fruit is so beautiful. Oh, look at that fruit. Oh, isn't that, it's got so much color the other fruits don't have. It looks so, the bumblebees are floating around that fruit. It's, ah. Oh, Why did they put a half-naked woman to sell a car on the hood of the car? Should not they pop the hood open and show you the clunker engine inside of it? Should they not show you the light on the car that says check engine rather than a half-naked woman? Why does advertising get your eyeball? Lust of the eyes. He saw that tree was good. Advertisers are paid to track your eyeballs. When you see that hamburger, and listen, I've taken their study. I was almost going to get into advertising. I've had their college book. I have seen their study. When you see that hamburger on that poster, you see that cheeseburger on the television screen, it's not a hamburger. It's not a cheeseburger. It's mascara. It's plastic. It's all other kinds of junk that make it. Oh, i got to have it artificial. You'd be amazed. I, I used to work second shift at Dunkin' Donuts. You'd be amazed. They come through the drive-thru. I gotta have that thing. I just saw on TV. What? That sandwich. It just advertised. I got dressed and came down here because I want that sandwich I saw on TV. And then when you give it to them, they open it up there and they open it. That ain't what it looks like. Uh-huh. So number one thing we need to look at. What are your eyes looking at? And whatever your eyes want to see, that tree, the devil said. Now I'm going to try to be clean. But the devil knows in your life what your sins are. The devil knows. <clears throat> I'll tell you one out right now. The devil can put beer I could have came for this Bible study and there could have been beer and vodka and all the great alcohols on this table open. And they could have said, free, help yourself. Not to me. Alcohol smells like pee. Mm -hmm. Smells like urine. That, that's not bothering me. But I'm telling you something as far as the eyeballs, and I'm not going to tell you what my sin is. No, that's God, me, and the devil. The devil, the, the devil says, with the eyeball, he'll put that picture or that thing in front of you. You're at the grocery store and you turn. Oh, I should have been seeing that. <laughs> and your eyes will focus on the worst times in your life and say, we're going to see that pretty soon with David. You know that first look? Hey, that, okay, sorry Lord. Okay, maybe that second look. Was it really, was it really that? But that third and fourth look, that's the realm of pornography. That's the realm of the lust of the eye. You don't need to be looking. And it don't need to be pornography. It just may be something that, you know what? You ought not to be looking at it. The Bible says don't look at it. Your parents say don't look at it. Your wife don't want you looking at it. It don't belong to your eyes. It could be something it's over your budget to have. The eyes of the fool is, is his head is out in outer space. It's beyond the world. You don't need to be looking at that expensive car. You can't afford that expensive car. Eve ought not have been looking at that tree. That tree was not hers, not supposed to be hers. Had no idea to be hers. What she doing looking at it? She should call Adam over, call God over, and say, God, get your heavenly chainsaw, chop that thing down, because I can't keep my eyes off it. And she's imperfect. She has no sin yet. Look at that. There's no sin yet. 
Don't you tell me she grew up in the ghetto. Don't tell me she was a product of, of color and a product of race. She's in a natural environment and she's looking at it. She's sinning. And there is no sin. She's looking at it like that. You know what she should have done? She called the bond God. You know what you do when you got that sin? That sin pops in your life. Say, God, I need help. Before you even get out of bed, say, God, before I open my eyes this morning, the things out there I ought not be looking at, I like looking at it, I'm not supposed to look at it. Lord God, help my eyes to put those sunglasses on. Put the sin glasses on so I don't see it. Because the devil will put it out there. How many trees were in that garden? And she had her eyes on one. Really? Apple, apricots, oranges, dates, figs, chestnuts, and uh, uh, walnuts, and all the she was at one tree. Oh, I can look at I can look at a hundred websites and no problem. That one. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, less than the eyes. A tree to desire to make one wise. Pride of life. Look at what I know. Look at me. I'm smarter than you. You don't know what I know. If you knew how many preachers I knew that I sat on the wrong side of their death and I didn't get their permission because they were the preacher, touch not the Lord to know didn't do his prophets no harm. Excuse me, sir, that's a passage for Israel. Don't you tell me. You have no right to tell me because I'm the preacher. Bye. <laughs> See you. Because you're a sinner just like me. There are people when you tell them about Jesus because of who they are and what they are. I couldn't believe that. Really? Tell me, stop. I'm Catholic. You're proud of being a Catholic. I'm a Christian. You're the wrong Christian. But that's what you're putting your product and your faith in. That's a pride of religion. Well, I'm too educated. That's a pride of education. She saw that it was good for food. She had not tasted it yet. That's the lust of the flesh. She looked at it. She saw it was good for food. It can make her wise. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride. There it is, Eve, in the garden without sin. There she is sinning. Satan's first toolbox. Brought to you by the Word of God. And twisting it. Now, if Eve, without sin, because the sin doesn't happen until she takes that bite, she's without sin. God, Jesus Christ, holy, without sin, we studied, didn't we? And you have the nerve to think, well, I'm a Christian, I can, oh, you're bound for a fall. How many preachers do you know of the ministry of television and radio? I can get away with that affair with that woman. And then boom. Lust of the eye. Lust of the flesh. And I will never happen to me. Just ask Farwell. And his college, uh, and his college is wrong, but he, he's messed up a whole college, he's messed up his wife, he's messed up that woman, he's messed up his children. Because, ooh, that woman looks hot. <laughs> ooh, I gotta have that woman. <laughs> wow, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a far away. I can tell you less preachers. I know preachers personally who have gotten into those three sins and messed up the entire church and ran off with the with the piano player and all that other mess. I know those stories. But that's Genesis 3, 6. At the moment they sin is when they did eat. That's when they sin. But the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life happened before they ate. That's our mother. That's our great, 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 great without sin. And, they, and Satan used them three tools on her. And got the victory. 
And Satan walked away from the throne of God that afternoon. I've got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. Come on, God, deep down in my heart. I just ruined your creation down deep in my heart. <laughs> you don't want to give the devil victory when he walks away from the throne of God. Now, he didn't get that victory with Job. You mean the devil goes up? Yeah, I believe he goes up today. I don't know how he does it. I believe he goes, hey, you see that guy? I can just imagine, listen, I only preach what I know, so don't, you know, think I'm, but two weeks ago, I can imagine the devil going to the guy and saying, hey, you get the cops after him, that guy's going to lose his temper, he's going to blow his testimony, and he's going to ruin it all. Go ahead. Get the cops after him. Go ahead. Well, we got a guy here. Well, okay, officer, let me, um, I'll tell you what, let me, well, we're on my phone with the lawyer. The lawyer said, we got to talk this out. I'm going to go home right now. I don't want to be a jerk. And if the lawyer says I can be back here, I'll be back here. If not, I apologize for being wrong. That devil walked away from the throne of God with the tail between his legs and he's got a tail. And God's like, hey, come on, son. We got the joy down deep in our heart. Because the guy didn't act like a jerk. And even my lawyer said today, talking to the police chief and talking to the city attorney's office, that guy is, is rectable. He, he, he didn't be a jerk. See, the devil wants us to lose our testimony. And boy, did he lose it with Eve that afternoon or morning. That's why we got to study out the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and, and the lust of the eyes. And you know already, because I know the Holy Spirit has sparked your heart to say, he's talking about that. How do he know about that? He's peeking in my holy windows. And no, no, I ain't peeking nothing. The Holy Spirit knows what's in your window. The Holy Spirit knows where to tap. And I'm trying not sometimes to say my personal sin. But I know the devil says, there it oh, come on, knock it off. Yeah. Ah, I got you again, didn't I? And he'll get you. That's temptation. You got a problem with, with, with looking at, at, at other people? You got the Bible says Jesus says in Acts, I mean uh, Matthew five twenty eight. Whosoever looking upon a woman and lusts after his heart has already committed. I need to get my eyes off that woman. I need to get off that adultery, or if it's a man, if it's a woman. When you're gonna look at that pornography, you better realize Jesus said that's adultery. Amen. Even if you don't get in the bed with that person, it's adultery. You got a big fat mouth, use it too much. Know that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, a man shall give an account of every idle word. You got a problem of who you are and what you are? Pride goeth before destruction. I don't sign my name Dr. Stiley Hayward. I sign it Stiley Hayward DD. Dead dog. Dumb and dumber. Supposed to mean doctor of theology. Very rarely do I put doctor in, unless I'm writing one of my papers and I'll put doctor. I don't want to lift myself up, but I earned that title. But I don't lavish that title. I mean, I've dealt with, I've dealt with the ministry. You, you, you didn't call me sir. You didn't call me pastor. Shoo, excuse me, you didn't say mister. I had a boss one time, she, she, she wrote me up, because when I came to work, I didn't say hello to her. My boss and I were, but, you know, she's the boss, and I, was, I, think, I think I was having a bad night that night. One, just, just one of those nights of bad, I didn't say hello to her. That's the pride of life. We got enough problem with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, but those are the three tools that Satan uses. Now we got to look at our life. You can't blame me. Well, we can kind of blame the devil, but once you couldn't blame the devil for Eve taking that fruit, because at any moment she could have called. Do you realize that Eve would have called on God that afternoon? So look what it says in verse 6. And the woman saw, lust of the eyes, that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, that it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the, the, the eyes. The tree that desired to make one wise, pride of life, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. Adam standing right there with her. 
Has she nudged honey by and said, Adam, I need some help here. Things would be a lot different. Had Eve or even Adam or Adam and Eve got together as husband and wife and got on their knees and said, God, we got a problem here. First of all, the serpent's talking to us and you said that fruit that we're not to eat. I, I, I want it, God. Things would have been a lot different. Mm -hmm. So why can't we call upon God when the devil comes up with whatever temptation or temptations that he uses on us personally in our life? Because my temptations are not your temptations and your temptation is not my temptation. I'll, I'll give you an innocent temptation I got, and, and I sin. I used to be a smoker. Thank God God's given me the victory. But when I walk by a cigarette, someone smoke, I'm like, especially a pipe or, or a cigar. My nose, I will not be doing this. And they say it's secondhand smoke, that's a sin. Devil knows. Like I said, put all the alcohol in free. Put a bartender here. Make it all free and all that. You would not even get a drop of thirst out of it. I don't care about that. You can put all the gold on this table and all the silver in the world on this table. Just give me enough to pay my bills this year and I'll be ready to get out the rest. But, the, but, but, you can say that, but the devil knows what your eyes, the devil knows what you're, you're feeling, the devil knows your flesh, the devil knows who you are, the devil knows where your pride is, and he'll come and get you with that, and you know, and already you thought about that, this in this message. How many other trees were in that garden? We don't know. But which one did the devil point out? Uh-huh. He knew exactly where he was looking at. He knew exactly what Eve was thinking. How come he didn't challenge Adam? You ever ask yourself that question? Because Adam didn't have that problem. It looks like Adam didn't even care about that tree. He just went out one day with honey pie, shopping, looking at things. He's probably sitting down at a bench outside the mall store while she's in shopping. Didn't have realized what kind of trouble he was that she was in that store looking at something she ought not be looking at. Number one, we're going to be closing. Number one. If I get killed this week, or we can't have any more Bible studies, or whatever thing, I want you to know by this Bible study today, I want you to know there are three tools out there by the devil. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And the devil knows where to attack you. And he ain't going to attack you where he ain't a problem. He's going to get you where it is a problem. And I hopefully now, as you set off in your Christian walk today, when you start realizing, hey, wait a minute, that's the devil putting that in front of me. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what you do right now. You say, Lord God, I, I confess that sin. I now acknowledge that sin. I'm doing that sin. I need, I'm repentant. And you said you're faithful enough and just enough. Forgive me my sin. I'll tell you right now, last night, I was listening to Dr. Ruffin's Daniel. I was just sitting there listening. I can't sleep. I listen to books and I listen to the Bible. I'm sitting there listening and Dr. Ruckman said something. Now I've been saved since 1987. That's 33 and a half years. Mm. And God said, I want you to pay attention. I said, okay. You just heard, did you just hear what he just said? Yeah, I heard what he said. You do that, don't you? Yeah, I do. That's part of your thoughts, isn't it? Uh huh. Now you got another. Now you got another war. Because the devil's going to put that in your thoughts now, and you got to stop it. The devil's going to put into your life things that are going to attract you against God. You got to say no. Don't worry about fighting the communists. Don't worry about the Republicans and Democrats. Worry about today your battle with the devil and the devil putting stuff in your life to say that dishonors God. 
get in the scriptures, read the scriptures, study the scriptures, pray, 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 and put your Bible armor on and don't take it off till you die. I told that that's one of the last things I told Tracy before she died. I said, you can take off your, that was her memory verse. That was her life verse. I said, you can take off your armor now. It was about seven, eight hours after that, she died. Don't take off yours. Now, number one thing, you got, and you know what it is. I don't know what it is. I know what mine are. You got a problem with sin? You got a problem with specific sin? Find it in the Bible and make it your memory verse. What's the devil going to do if you... And then your reaction to God, yep, that, that Bible verse right there I memorized, yep, that says I'm guilty, I'm a sinner. All I can do, God, is I can just ask you to forgive me. You've got the devil in the corner. Don't go after the devil with your degree. Don't go after the devil. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I don't know the Bible. You ain't getting very far. And let me tell you again, I've already said it, and I, listen, I pray for the Farwell family. And I just want to let you know that. But there are people, and I don't know about the story, but I'm just, that this name came up. There are people in ministry that have destroyed their families and destroyed churches because of their, their, their lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. And they were in good standing. They were in good positions. Good is not good enough when we're all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Now next week, Lord willing, we're going to look at we're going to look at a good man. You ready? We're going to look at David. Now, now the devil won't attack a king. He attacked Jesus. You remember what the devil said to Jesus? Now get this. Now get this just for a moment. Get these words in this, this study. If thou be the Son of God, He is the Son of God. You know, you know another thing that God's going to bring in your life as you are a Bible-centered Christian wanting to do right? He's going to send religious people in your life and they're going to doubt God. You know why those Jehovah Witnesses come knocking on your door? Because the devil wants you to doubt that Jesus is God. And if you don't know enough Scripture, like, and I'm not boasting myself, but you can't do battle with them like I do with the Scriptures, just get off my doorstep. Get out of here. You want to deal with them? Memorize Scripture and get ready. Well, it's going to take some battles, but right now, your sins in your life. The devil knows you as best as you know yourself. Now remember, now remember, the devil knows you better than your parents, the devil knows you better than your spouse, and the devil knows you better than you. And he slipped. And his main goal is to get, get you angry with God. And get God angry with you so they will not worship and put their centered life around God. Lord God, the Father, a serious lesson today. Lord God, that we must remain by the word of God, by prayer, by confessing, and to realize that we're not who we are. Lord God, we're not in perfection yet. Lord God, we're going to need help. We're going to have a battle. We're going to get those temptations. Lord, I pray you please send others now. Not just so we can say, look at the people that came. But Lord, for people to study and hear your word of God outright. And Lord, again, I just pray for tomorrow, for the farmer's market, Lord God. In humbleness, Lord, we bring the gospel. Lord, that we don't break no laws. Lord, may Jesus Christ be exalted. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Yes, yeah.